Hello and welcome to Tiger Bites. Another day, another session, and Jed is back. I'm Ooh. back. Oh, no. Good old me. And joining oh, us gosh. as usual. Tim is loves it when I'm back. <laughs> and joining us as usual is Tim Newton. What's this fancy case you've got? It's it's this heavy duty anti crack anti drug it's, it's case. Military yeah, phone military cases. grade. Military it certainly cases. is. Yes. He what bought it on Lazada for, for the military bar. grade waffle that goes on inside that phone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tiger Bites. This is where we get to address your comments from all of our social media as well as all of our shows on YouTube and the Tiger Talk Forum on the website. Uh, shall we get cracking on with it, boys? Let's crack away. I'm, I'm going to start today because uh, Frank in Thailand got really upset with me. He watched Good Morning Thailand this morning and he said, What? It's Lumberjack Friday, people. Jay, what happened? Yes, what happened, Jay? I what happened, like, Jay? I'm like appalled. I would like to take this moment to apologize uh, as it was Friday morning and for whoever watched the show we had a little bit of a snafu when we started the show uh, we had a little bit of a oh, it's an ongoing snafu throughout yeah, the entire ongoing program ongoing snafu uh, you're going to have to watch to find out what happened but uh, yes unfortunately I couldn't uh, get to the shirt in time the shirt was calling me though but it's here but now you're a lumberjack at heart I am it's a lumberjack here. at heart I can heart. also confirm that that shirt hasn't been washed for about 18 months and it's starting to get a little bit of whiffy that's not true you do take French showers in it, though. What's a French What's shower? When you douse cologne all over. Like it. you just did. Yeah. yeah. You stink. <laughs> well, you just did, right? You just because of that. I was I like, know well, nothing. I was wondering why are you wearing cologne for I the know. show? I like, know nothing. Are you the trying to you've, impress us? You've splashed on your shirt is more overpowering than the stench out of Jack does Jay's look like a cologne shirt. man, though. I don't wear cologne. Oh, do you not? I, I just wear Dior. Oh, it's, is that smell your shirt? That's yeah, his. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's what I'm talking about. I, I, I it's apologize, the lumberjack yes. man. Yes. I apologize. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I've got one from David Benjamin, who says, How bad are the summer months in Thailand? Are they terrible months to visit? Well, now is summer. Summer goes from sort of December through to February, and it's usually the best time of the year to travel around most of Thailand. A bit cooler up north. And uh, when you go down south, the humidity vanishes and we get those sort of slightly cooler mornings and lovely days with blue skies. So summer is a fantastic time. Uh, it's from now till Songkran that it starts to get pretty hot, especially up where you yeah. live. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually not the worst time for Chiang Mai because of the haze and all like that, but it's actually really nice um, in the islands on the Gulf of Thailand side, like yes. Sui, Pangan, Kot Tao. It's actually really nice during this time. Yeah. And also, like Tim said, you have Songkran. That's one of the major um, festivals in Thailand to experience. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, not this yeah, year. We'll see if it happens. In general, we're going to be optimistic. I think they're going to go for a hat trick. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, but look, I would say any time around the year is not a bad time. If it's even if it's the wet season, it's going to rain for half an hour and then it's yeah. going to be fine. It's pros and cons. Like if you sure. come when everyone wants to come, then you're going to complain about it being too crowded too. Right? Sure. So you can't complain about that now. Right, guys. My next comment is from Agent Martz, who says, "Those who complained about Jay and Natty's accent are definitely the class of Western individuals who seem to pattern right everything." For their colonial benefit, for anyone to claim educated means he or she should be able to comprehend different models of accents, uh, stop the complaints, encourage them to do better, hashtag one global world, hashtag many accents, one language. I don't know about you, Jed, I couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> Who, Agent Martz? Uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to note that he didn't complain about my accent, so yes. thank you very much, Agent Marks. That's right. Spot on. Well... You're I, the one with the accent. Yeah, different people, We're, different accents. Yeah. This is, no, no, this no, is no, normal no. English. No, this I is the normal <laughs> English right here. I'm guessing all three of us have different accents. We actually My, do have different yeah, accents. I yes. would say Australian slash Kiwi. <laughs> Not much Kiwi. I'd say modified Australian. Modified, yes. <laughs> okay. Modified as fake Australian. Uh, American. Very American. Even American. though people thought you were German. <laughs> yes. And... I'm just lost. I'm just a citizen of the world. Yeah, your accent very, defies any sort of definition. It's, it's, it's Thai British curriculum. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, right? I think that's um, about right. But I have a, a real question now. I, I feel that people often confuse. Often. <laughs> often. Yeah, to stick with your right. British Pe education. It's got a tea in it. People often confuse uh, the ability to speak a language with intelligence. Why is it that? 
you know, some one person makes one grammar mistake and people are like, oh, you're not even educated. I mean, there's a difference between language skills and actual intelligence about a subject. Would you agree? You can no, be a bad genius and not be able to string a um, couple of sentences, couple of sentences together. together. Just so like me. Now. Yeah, <laughs> math genius. Yeah. So Somluck uh, has responded and said, uh, the TAT is an example of a captured government agency. Yeah. Not exactly sure what he means by that. It's simply a mouthpiece of the Thai tourism industry funded by the Thai taxpayer. Its harebrained schemes are obviously thought up by private enterprise uh, tourism promoters and lobbyists who are quite happy to spend Thai taxpayers' money. Well, that's his point. He's, he's uh, captured by the enterprise tourism, private enterprises. That's usually what he means when something is captured. We should explain how the TAT works. Well, what we know, because some of it is uh, pretty hard to understand, but it's fun fully funded by the Thai government, and it's, uh, it's an agency. It's got a governor and... Um, a whole lot of people that are just on the public purse, uh, sucking on the teat, as they'd say, of the public purse. Uh, so that's the way it works. Okay. Uh, are they captured by sort of private industry? No, I don't think they are. I think they're more captured by the, the perils of the Thai government's decisions. Well, I mean, captured is is a vague term. Right? What do you mean by captured? Right. Well, they're, that's they're, the term. They're he obvious. Used. Well, they're obviously influenced by lobbyists or private companies because tourism the tourism industry in thailand is mostly private right it's not like the, the government doesn't run hotels or anything so i'm sure they are very much influenced by the private enterprise tour yes there'd be a lot of lobbying going on but if they're actually captured not sure i mean they probably definitely are highly influenced by what they have to say thank you somluck for your comment all right next is tello valencia or tello valencia um <laughs> <laughs> Depending on your accent. Yeah, he's from Spain. I tried. Um, he's from Barcelona. Tim, he's got a correction for you. Oh, great. Now, last week you said something oh. that upset a lot of people. Which and his one? Comment simply, Which one of the 50 things yeah. I said? His comment simply reads, Mel Gibson, oh, born January the 3rd, 1956, Peekskill, New York, United States. Yeah. It's actually, USA, baby. He is an American-made man. That's actually where I lived in New oh, York. Oh, really? Yeah, very close to Peekskill, New York. Cool. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, Sir Tim Newton uh, referred to Mel Gibson as Australian. Uh, and we've come to the conclusion that any person <laughs> who's visited Australia or shot a movie there, especially an actor, is Australian, according to Tim. No, everything's from America, Tim. America mm. invented everything. Uh, that's, that's, I, I, it goes without saying. I grew up watching <laughs> Mel Gibson, the young Mel Gibson, like in his teenage years and beyond making movies in Australia. Yeah. And I wrongly assumed that he was born in Australia. And he had a broad Australian accent. He was Mad Max <laughs> in the Australian outback, fighting off the, uh, oh, I don't know, all the people he fought off. <laughs> Okay. It was a great series of movies. Did you see all the Mad Max movies? Y yes. They yes. were great. It's it's great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The original That's shocking is not it that an actor would be able to replicate a foreign accent as part of his career. Well, it's traditionally, so uh, most Americans, like real Americans, uh, can't do an Australian accent. M Meryl Streep being one of them, we went through oh, that no, this morning. Oh, yeah, watch that video. Which he played Lindy Chamberlain in Evil Oof. Angels. Dingo's got my baby. Well, that's the thing. Most of the actors need to have an American accent to make it into Hollywood, sure. basically. And a lot of Australian actors who go over there perfect the American accent. The Hugh, Jackman. Hugh Jackman, for example. Yeah. Mel Gibson. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently. Brad Pitt did an amazing oh, gypsy he, accent. He was born in Australia. Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Brad that? Pitt's Australian, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 he's Australian yeah. now. Oh, sure, yeah. Along with Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah. John, uh, definitely Australian. The whole Australian. crew down there. Down, yeah, down yeah, 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 yeah. The Depp yeah. family live uh, yeah. right yeah. next door. Taylor Swift. Australian. Australian. Yeah. And swiftly moving on to yeah. the next All the country question. music singers. Aus all Australian. Australian. Yeah. Next question? Oh, from me. How about you? I, I have a I have a bunch here. Well, you so have questions. Yes, I, you told me to get. So five we're going to be here for three hours. <laughs> I didn't think we can skip it if you want. <laughs> no, go for it. Let's go. Hi, hi. Says maybe, just maybe. Okay. The future of travel will be virtual. Ooh. Who knows? Maybe it's already virtual. Like now. in the holodeck on Star Trek Enterprise. What are we talking about? Twenty-five years, thirty years? Are we all just going to travel in the metaverse? 
Well, that's an interesting thought. I hope not. I sort of like the idea of wandering down a foreign street and enjoying the smells and the whimsy and trying to encapsulate the culture, enjoying a foreign sunset, looking across an unknown horizon. I do see the appeal, though, because there's this one really gorgeous YouTube channel called Scenic Relaxation, and it's... Ah. And it's basically drone shots of like really stunning nature all around the world. And you're just there in the comfort of your home, there's music on, and then you just really enjoy these, this gorgeous scenery. So I guess I do see the appeal of, of virtual tourism the, as an addition yeah, to tourism. Very different experience. Very though. different, but I do see it emerging as a separate industry, not, not to replace actual in-person tourism. I had the brilliant idea. Oh, you know the when you can walk on in software into a property, it's called mm -hmm. Matterport. You can walk in and you can turn around and look down, look up, <laughs> and then go through a door and uh -huh. look around. You do it on your real estate things. Yes. <laughs> yes. Are you plugging yes. my channel now? No, def <laughs> definitely not. Is this a free <laughs> plug? <laughs> Thank you, Tim. I love how we explained it to us. <laughs> it's almost like, Tim, this is an iPhone. <laughs> you can make calls on okay, this. Okay, so that's called Matterport. It's like three-dimensional. <laughs> I, I had the idea of, of getting the Matterport cameras and putting them in popular Thai tourist locations and letting people then sort of walk in and turn around and look down. And everybody thought it was a ridiculous idea. I think that actually has happened in other major cities like in in Venice or Rome. I was the, cornering the yeah. market for Bangkok. We can do it. We have we have the Matterport. I know. Too. You can go and realize your dream sure. this weekend. Yeah. Would you watch it? I, Comment. I could if, if Matterport there was, my If we house. set up a bunch of Matterports all around <laughs> Bangkok live, yeah. would you guys actually tune in and do some tours? Yeah. Would, would that be fun? Of course they would. Yeah. And then it'll be like maybe Natty will be on one end giving a tour. I'll be on one end. Well, that's just a better experience. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of a two-dimensional yeah. uh, picture of a, you know, waves washing into Phuket Beach. All right. Next comment from you, Tim. Al Bundy. Not the Al Bundy, I assume. The Australian actor. But <laughs> yes. Played by the Australian actor. Uh, Al Bundy, uh, he actually uses the photo of Al Bundy too. Okay. Maybe he is. Do you remember Al the show? Maybe Al Ma Bundy. Married Maybe it is children? Al Bundy. I have no idea who Al Bundy is. Maybe it is. is Al Bundy. Anyway, he had a lot to say. He said, just like the TAT wants quality tourists, the Tiger wants quality viewers. Damn straight. So you better shape up. So what do you think, Jay? How do you rate the quality of our viewers? I would say 85% of our viewers are quite decent. Yes, they have bad. Quite, quite, quite decent. Quite decent. Quite decent. It's, it's, it's just a faint phrase. Faint you know, phrase. It's, 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 like the, it's like small dog uh, I'd say syndrome. they're excellent. It's that small dog syndrome. You know, the smallest dog always barks the loudest. Yeah. There's always like one or two I, of I, them. You know, they want a little attention and they come out and like... I honestly don't think you can judge to be heard. a tiger audience by the comments section. Yeah. I think that is the loud minority. I've, I, do, you, do you get people walk up to you a lot and recognize yeah, you? Yeah, and they're absolutely lovely. They're lovely. They're great people. Um, yeah. You know, the people that come up and they're really great people. So, and they don't comment. Why haven't I had the nice people walking up to me? They yeah, you up. have. You just don't go they anywhere, walk up to you. They you argue about something I said three months ago. Well, every now and then. Or they just walk up and go, I hate what you said the other day. Okay. But hello, who are you? <laughs> Tim, you gotta get out. That's well, You gotta you, go to a nice you, place. You work and then you sleep in the closet and here the, and then come back out and work. The reason I don't go out anymore is because people recognize me and want to challenge me Do when I'm out really, of the... Do people really, are really aggressive to you? I've, Quite often. Uh, knock on wood, actually never happened to Half me. the time when people see me out in the street, they usually want That's... to challenge me about something that was serious? said. Are you serious? Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, it's just a show, guys. About two weeks ago, I was, <laughs> why do you wear all those stupid shirts? Not it's just a show, accent. guys. <laughs> really? Wow. How about, how do you do? Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, but I, I don't know, I guess we've been lucky then, because most of the people... We've been lucky, yes. I, I've had a, even a couple of people, like, as they're driving by on a motorbike, they'll be like, hey, Jay, love the show. And I'm like, thank you. He's a lumberjack. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> people really are. They're awesome. They've been awesome so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate all the people that came up to say hi. Talking about awesome, uh, Scott Kingston, uh, talking actually from one of our episodes from uh, Lawyers, Guns and Money, he says, we're in the southern province and guns are everywhere. You don't really see them much, but people are packing. 
packing. packing. Are people packing in the south? We come from the south. I never realized they were packing. I'm guessing he means south, south. Uh, yeah, when it comes Damn to... Damn right, we're packing down in the south. When no, it comes not, not, not Thai, it's south in Thailand. <laughs> They talk like that, too. I'm doing a Thai Southern accent. I think he's too American. <laughs> Y'all come back now. So, oh, oh, no. Good. What was that? When it comes to guns, I've never seen anybody with a gun in Phuket. Oh, Phuket. Uh, I think they were talking yeah, about, like, the like southern border I, province. I, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Or something. Uh, and there was some discussion about where the gun violence is worse, whether it's worse in Thailand or the U.S. Now, I actually asked the people who said, no, 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 it's twice as bad in Thailand as it is in the U.S. I said, well, please send me the figures that you've got. I've only seen one uh, particular survey done by, I think it was Washington State University, that claimed that Thailand had twice as bad gun violence. Uh, other than that, most of the Wikipedia references all say that uh, the US is worse than, the, than Thailand. So uh, it, I'll leave it out in the open. I'm what not exactly say? sure. Did, did the lawyer have any comments on, on I that? can't remember whether we actually spoke about the statistics The statistics generally. themselves. All I can say is walking around Thailand, I just don't see the gun culture is as open or as obvious as when I no. visited the America many times. No. Uh, and people sort of don't, certainly in Thailand, don't t seem to boast Definitely about having more, a gun. Definitely more guns in Phuket, though, those kinds of guns all around. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, muscle factory. Yeah. A lot of more Thai fighters and people yeah. come for fitness. Those kind of guns, plenty yeah. of gun-related gun violence there. It's a gun there. show. And, yeah. Never been <laughs> confronted with anybody who either owns a gun or has shown off the gun. Or I've never seen a gun in Phuket. That would be weird if you're walking down Phuket and you just see like, a guy with a holster and just got a gun and goes, Hi, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. Want to come over to the ranch? I'd be off the other way. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Who's next? Uh, those are the same questions I picked, too. So yeah. Larry said people worried about Larry said uh, people are worried about rapidly rising inflation on food, gas and housing prices. Leisure travel will have to take a back seat until the economy recovers and inflation is somewhat stable. Thank you very much, whoever's sending me messages there. Uh, this is in reference to our discussions about whether we believe there was pent up demand for a lot of travel. People really just chafing at the bit to get back to Thailand or wanting to travel anywhere. He's suggesting, Larry's suggesting, that inflation is going to be a big problem, especially if you're in Russia. Uh, so, but prices are going to be up and it's going to be more expensive to travel because of uh, the rising oil costs. Oil costs. Air, air flights are going to be costing more. PCR so, testing. Uh, even though there may be a lot of pent up demand, it may not be realised. So I hope the TAT take that into account when they do their next lot of numbers for, uh, for Thailand. Thanks, I've, Larry. Thanks, Larry. I've held this comment for about four days now. This is a comment from Magnus. 90% of the people who dies in Thailand have been eating rice the last 24 hours. Do they die with rice or of rice? Is rice more dangerous than COVID since more of the people who dies have been eating rice? Yes, uh, this was in relation to people who uh, talk about correlation people, and causation people yeah. dying with COVID or with COVID with co because of COVID or just with COVID. Yes. Magnus yeah. is definitely a farmer. So farmer Magnus um, <laughs> would you like to take this, Tim? <laughs> Watch out. He could well, he's just making the, saying that a lot of people in Thailand would have eaten rice on the day they died, so therefore it was caused by the rice. Well, I definitely hope you guys didn't eat rice, because I ate rice for lunch, unfortunately. I didn't. Did you? I did not. Oof. Okay, so well, one out of three. We'll find out <laughs> next out week. Three. Thank you, Farmer Magnus. Yes. All My right. turn, your turn? Uh, your um, turn. Back to Go me. Right ahead, yeah. Fug Uber. Okay. F U double G okay. U H B E R. I'm not sure if that's code for something. Do you know? No? Good. I know. Bali, 10 years ago, would have been great. Popularity has lowered the quality of the experience. Now there's a problem with tourists, 2019, and success of tourism. Yes, that's the trade off. We were briefly discussing in some program the differences between Bali and Phuket and people giving us their preferences. But this is the problem. You find a nice location and you provide flights and then you build hotels and other infrastructure for the tourists. And then it gets to a point where people don't like it anymore mm -hmm. because there's too many so tourists. Overdone. So has that happened to Phuket in 2019? Is it, has it peaked already and is it into its decline? Definitely not. What about a place like Pattaya? So my 
my dad and I actually had this conversation about Phuket yesterday, actually. So we would actually, when we go to Phuket, we would go to Gamala Beach, which at the time when I was a toddler was just... Last year. <laughs> <laughs> you walked into that no, one. <laughs> it was, it was ba- we were basically the only people on the beach. Oh, yeah. 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 And that's just not the case anymore. Uh, correct. Yeah. So things just play themselves out and uh, yeah. I feel like we're running out of places. That's what's happening with Phuket because like uh, Jet, the, one of the reasons I don't go is because a lot of the beaches are getting crowded. So I'm always looking for a beach where I know that not many people will be there. I know a number of beaches I can go to don't tomorrow. See. That's don't right. Sh- and I will don't, not don't, see don't. another yeah. human all day. That's right. And yeah. like, as locals, we figure there's these one or two beaches out and we try to keep it as quiet as possible and be like, <laughs> okay, only we know. Are they nice beaches, though? Or yeah. are oh, they abandoned yes. for a reason? Yes. Yes. Absolutely nice yeah. They're nice because they're abandoned and nobody's going to come and, you know. There's a lot of beaches, by the way, and yeah. you get some 38 different beaches. It is an island. It, it is an island, but indeed. I feel like maybe we are, however, like five to ten years away from Phuket just becoming like Pattaya. And, wh- and how would you describe that? What, overdeveloped? Mm, overdeveloped. Um, Oversexed? It, over sex definitely it's getting uh i feel like you know it used to be just one street it used to be soy bangla however now it's spreading it's not just soy bangla in but there's in a lot Patong more to phuket now. than just uh that's Patong. right but then a reputation builds up padaya is has more to offer than just the walking street and the red light district however unfortunately you, people tend to focus on that you think so i feel phuket has more to offer than Patia. Oh, in no, right opinion. now, definitely. But I feel like in five to was, ten years, yeah. that's where it's heading towards. You've okay. still got rainforests and walking tracks and lakes. Yeah, there's and plenty in Phuket. Mangroves I mean, when, and you've got Phuket yeah. Town, which is a whole different vibe altogether. Excellent food. You've I got the north of the island, which is very quiet. You've definitely. You've got the, the Muslim agree. community. I agree with all of that. But then again, I just feel like I hope they don't ruin their reputation by going focusing too much on that one particular It'll area. It'll always be that. Yeah. But then it'll always be like that level and then there'll be other industries popping up too and all like that. Well, I hope so. Thank yeah. you, Fug Uber. What have you That was a good is. question. Yeah. That was a good question. All right. Uh, I'm going to take it next with Tyron who's actually talking about um, the recent drowning of Tang Mo. Uh, he says, hmm, is using lie detector actually legal to force on someone? Of course, it's Thailand. Personal rights is a cumbersome detail. There is no 100% accurate lie detector, and that is why they are not admissible in courts of law in most civilized countries. I'm pretty sure the lie detector evidence that they collect or don't collect from the people who were on the boat when Tang Mo drowned would possibly be uh, admissible in a Thai court, Uh, as he said, certainly in most Western courts. Uh, Can you force a person to take a lie detector test? I don't know. Uh, I certainly don't know the situation in Thailand. I've never heard them used before in Thailand. I'm not sure where they'd get them from. What do you mean? Well, well where do you... Oh, we've got a, Who uses lie detectors? It, the they, they might have to, what, Have you ever seen a lie detector? Yeah, but we it's not, don't get arrested, It's not Tim. like a crazy... We're not in and out of yeah. the station all the time like you. <laughs> well, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> that many people would have lie detectors in Thailand. Like, yeah, you're talking like... like I, I have to say, it was surprising that they just mentioned lie detectors. It, it just seems like such a very archaic and woo-woo kind of way of, 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 <laughs> of, it's of, a, like, trying yeah. to, of truth-seeking, right? So where are they finding these lie detectors? Yeah, but it's a lie detector. They buy it. It's not some futuristic as, as always, technology. Tim, they buy it used from China. That's how, that's how Thai government gets all their gear from. But I don't know if there are lie detectors in Thailand. I don't, well, where, who's been buying them? I'm sure that If you are. can't use them as admissible evidence. It's not Blade Runner 2049, it's just a lie detector. <laughs> yes, but it is a specific piece of equipment. There are 70-something million people in Thailand. Someone's got a, li- yeah, a lie someone, detector which, lying around. <laughs> Mum, Dad, I want to become a lie detector specialist. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and that's the other thing, is you, of course you need a lot of training to be able to interpret the information from the lie detector. Maybe so, they called uh, someone in from Australia. <laughs> who's a better lie detector, the device or your Thai girlfriend? Oh, <laughs> now that's a very, very good point. <sighs> Don't mess with yeah. Jet's girlfriend. 
are Jojo. Don't mess with them. <laughs> and this uh, relates to topics, I suppose you would call them as uh, timely. Okay. Jojo says, ban all flights from Russia, exclamation mark. So at the moment in Thailand, uh, there is not a ban on all flights from Russia. And I checked this morning and there were no flights from Russia arriving in Phuket, but there were two flights arriving in Bangkok. One from a far-flung Siberian location, I can't pronounce, and the other one from Moscow, which was an Aeroflot flight. So uh, I'm not sure if these are basically repatriation flights for Russians who are otherwise stranded after coming to Thailand on the back of the Thailand Pass and the test and go. They came here in good faith as, uh, as tourists. And we estimate some 2,000 Russians are still stuck in on Phuket alone and have maybe not been able to get back home. Now, of course, there's Ukrainians, but there's fewer Ukrainian tourists or travellers than Russians. But what's going to happen to these people? They can't get money from their ATMs, although they probably didn't bring uh, extra cash in their pocket. Mm. Uh, they maybe a booked, for them. booked a couple of weeks of accommodation. What's going to happen after that, uh, that time is over? Uh, are they going to be shunned? Are they going to have problems uh, just getting around the island or getting anywhere else in Thailand? So I think yeah. these people have got big problems. It's weird, this whole notion of collective punishment of people for the actions of their dictators. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to have sympathy for any of, of these course. tourists uh, who yes, have, have come from anywhere in Eastern Europe and have been, become stuck yeah. in Thailand because of the lack of flights. Uh, Thailand has not banned all flights from Russia, if that's what you wanted to know. All right, my last comment for today is from the fifth platoon who says, Tim wants to go all David Hasselhoff from a boat to an airplane every time he flies. A great aspirational hero. What? <laughs> David Hasselhoff, do you know who that was? I'd yes, love to see you boat he, from Phuket to Bangkok. Is David into Hasselhoff the from Yard Dirty River. Dancing? No, 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 that's Patrick Swayze. Oh, that's Patrick Swayze. Yes, David bad. Hasselhoff had oh, kit the talking car. Baywatch. That's David Hasselhoff. Okay, there we go. Yes, Sorry. There you go. Apologies. In the Australian. Uh, Melbourne Bay. He yeah. also had the talking car kit. Bondi Beach. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's still kicking, by the way, and making silly movies. Uh, now, what, where were we, the, the, the concept of catching a boat from Phuket to Bangkok, if you watched Hangover 2, there was a scene where they resolved all the problems they had in Bangkok, and they got on a boat, and they ended up in Phuket in the next shot. Yeah. So apparently, they think you can go from magically from Bangkok to Phuket. Yeah. Of course, Crossing in reality, all that land mass. you would have to go all the way to, through the Gulf of Thailand, all the way down the Malay Peninsula to Singapore, swing around the bottom, and then come up to Phuket. It'd probably take you three or four days. You know way too much about Hangover 2, by the way. Is that your favorite movie? I enjoyed it. I, enjoyed, I thought it was humorous, and I thought it was... Um, had the Bangkok perspective, the uh, the Thai perspective. Have you watched it? Yeah. I actually have I not was, watched Hangover. I f thought it was bad. It's just... It's it, was, it was repeated. The third one was a little bit better, but I felt like the story was repeated. Yeah. It was just a Thailand version of yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. It was cool for anyone who didn't know things about Thailand. Like, oh, look, there's monkeys, and he got a tattoo got his on his face. finger cut off. And yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry if I've spoiled the movie for you. Uh, we did a list a few weeks ago, the top 10 movies that were made in Thailand, and Hangover 2 was one of them. Wow. Uh, you did you do that list? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I got it were from... Were they all uh, Australian movies? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. Australian directors. Yeah. Yes. yes. All, all, right. all the major directors are Australians. Pretty much. I saw this, and I, I didn't... Well, you had to go p choose it, Tim. Sure. <laughs> this is from Julie Jensen. And okay. thank you very much, Julie. Yeah. Clearly an intelligent and uh, a lady with great perspective. <laughs> I noticed Jay has the height of a lady boy and the body of a grab food delivery driver. <laughs> Ever consider a career lifestyle change? <laughs> on demand lady boying on a uh. motorbike. I would have to say that most grab food delivery drivers are fairly svelte. I haven't S noticed. So you would utilize that height, you'd be a driver, they'd call you, you'd come over and screw the light bulb in because you're so high. Oh, wow. You're so tall, I mean, you're so high. Uh, so the internet's a messed up place. High. I'm not going to lie, that uh, comment was quite hilarious. You, you're, you're, so you can, so Just, you're high, yeah. you're allowed to go in and screw in light bulbs in ladies' bathrooms because you're a lady boy. I guess. 
that's how your career will be on demand. They can book a grab and they'll come you in. You would be I know the my next step. ugliest looking lady boy. <laughs> how dare you? Mind, All I need is a wig. Mind Story says, Jay, do you like attention at home? You seem to crave stealing Tim's thunder every chance you get. What thunder? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay, the question is, do you like attention at home? Would you uh, like to respond to that? From almost definitely. Yes, okay. Almost definitely. Uh, David How Benjamin. How long is this show? Why would, that, why, why would any <laughs> of us be on camera? The questions keep going Why would on? any of us be on camera if we didn't want the attention? Uh, David Benjamin says, How bad are the summer We've months in Thailand? We've already did that. Oh, okay. How long is the show, guys? I don't know. I'm <laughs> done. I'm done. He doesn't listen to Coming me. Coming to Thailand. All right, last one. There are th thousands of messages every can, day. Wait, can I tell you something funny before you go? You're talking about how long the show is. Start on Tuesday, I was talking to Tim, like, oh, Tim, we've got to keep the show tight. Uh, let's let's try to, you know, like cut the show down. Good morning, Thailand. It was 40 minutes. Next episode, 45 minutes. Today, I was like, Tim, I think we're running good. I've, o I've only picked about six stories, so we're definitely not going to go overboard. 50 minutes. But, There's no control but, in this but man. Okay. He's out of control. What's, I'm, I'm just putting this out. What's wrong with having a long show? If you guys are just, if if the vibe is there and you guys are just oh, talking around. Right. Sorry, Jet. The vibe was not there this morning. Oh, no. It was just an awful show. <laughs> it was a shocker. It but but what's, what's wrong with keeping, like, you see, you see, you know, podcasts, Joe Rogan, Lex yeah. Friedman. No, Podman. Pierre, these guys go for two, mm. three, four, yeah, five, five but hours. The Jet, but the that's jet, the, jet, the difference though. is they're yeah. interesting. Yeah. They're they're experts. Experts. They've got fair talent. point. Yes. yes. Fair David point. Indiana Aaron says, coming to Thailand soon, shopping for properties that Russians will have to sell. Remember, there is a cap on them, only removing 10K now. Or t ten thousand. So they baht. can so they can only sell their condos for ten k. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that's what he means. What does that even mean? And their currency is basically becoming worthless. Maybe they'll move to Cambodia. A lot of uh, speculation there, David. I uh, obviously there's problems for people from Russia or other European countries at the moment, including Ukraine. If they've travelled to Thailand, some of them will own property here. Uh, they're still allowed to own the property here in Thailand. It hasn't been denied from them at this stage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so anyway, we'll just have to see what's going to happen. Obviously, we are looking forward to a cessation of uh, the violence in Ukraine ASAP. All right. And that's all that, I've got. That's all we have for the show. All right, ladies yep. and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you do have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. We do check all your comments on all of our platforms. A quick shout out to Coffee Culture. Thank you, Coffee Culture, for sponsoring mm. the show. Uh, you can buy these cups uh, and mugs on uh, coffeeculture.asia. It says WTF mug. WTF mug. Yeah. Fida loca. There's actually a very good story behind that. So check that out on coffeeculture.asia. Fida loca. Yeah, today's as, show is only three and a half hours. As for now, uh, I'd like to say thank you to our special guest today, Jet. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Tim Newton. My pleasure. You're very welcome, Jet, by the way. And also thank He's you to Tha. First time doing uh, Tiger Bites behind the buttons. We hope Sorry, John, wake up. Yeah. He's nothing. He slept the I said whole behind way the through. buttons, we're only using one camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good one. See you.